Hi, we Bob here, and this is a video on the power of two particular tools that exist in all digital art applications and in real life too. Yeah, I've used these tools to create this eye with the city. Um, it's a landscape, not really quite sure, sci-fi type thing. But getting this great effect on the bottom of the eyelid um, using these particular tools. So what are these tools? They are the smudge and blend tools and that's what I'm talking about today. So I'm going to compare the results between Rebel 5 Pro Sketchbook Pro and Critter. So the first tip is the basics of Smudge and Blender and basically the first thing you need to do is find them and so if you look at the red circle it should show you the kind of basic blenders or smear tools as they're called as shown on the screen. But there are others available to us and they give us different results and we'll be talking a wee bit about some of them a wee bit later in this video. So the second tip is testing them out. Go and test these out. So we're going to start by drawing three shapes, an upside down U, a basic nose and a basic set of wonky lips. Firstly, let's look at Rebel 5 Pro, where when we select the smudge tool, we get this quite cool results. This is the, the technique I used to do the landscape in the eye at the start of this video. But it's not the results I need to make a smooth edge or a smooth rounded shape. To get the smooth edges, I need to go to the blending tool, which also exists in Rebel 5. And Rebel 5 can be really powerful with blending and mixing and painting and that's for another video at another time. And we don't need to draw everything with neat lines. The purpose of this technique is to get a nice result that we can sculpt our drawing rather than drawing every line and every shaded part. We can pull and blend everything together as you would do in real life. So in Rebel 5 Pro I found the blending tool to be very similar to what we can achieve in real life but as a digital art tool it didn't quite give me the control that I was looking for. The next practice drawing was in Sketchbook Pro and I started using the smear tool which is similar to the smudge tool. Um, I did then use the smudge tools within the brush sets. The smudge tool really allowed me to move the paint around and to try and get the general values I was looking for on the page. I then found a blender in the texture watercolour brush set called the Broad Stroke Brush Blender which gave me better results for what I was looking for. It worked really well and we ended up with a decent sketch. So last but not least is Critter and in Critter the options were very limited or I found them very limited straight out of the box. And we were left with these kind of two blenders, a main blender and an ear cleaner blender. I can't remember the name of that thing off the top of my head. Write, write it in the comments. Um, overall I was impressed. It gave me the control I was looking for straight out of the box. I was able to move the colours around and blend them together. There wasn't a smudge brush that I could see, so I did add some details using some of the pens and then blending them using these two main blenders. I was able to easily pull lighter colours back up into areas where I wanted lighter colours to be, so the top of this kind of leg arm thing here, rather than having to lay down another white paint. So I'll pull all the results of these together a wee bit later in this video. So just a quick thank you to everyone who is watching along. Likes have been really helping my channel recently and hopefully I'm providing you guys with some valuable tips. You tell me. Any questions just leave them in the comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. So in Rebel 5 you can see the results I got from mainly using the smudge brush with SI painting, especially the water flowing over the lower eyelid, but it could also be used to provide a nice hair texture. So tip three is not to overuse blending tools or smudge tools. You still need to paint, you still need to sketch, you still need to use those pencils and brushes to get a good looking drawing, or at least in my opinion you do. So to illustrate this, I've brought up my Batman drawing. So I'll leave a link to the speed paint of that at the end of this video. But with Batman I blended the painting um, in different areas to see if I could round off some of the edges, round off his head at the top, and to see if I can get a nice transition. But we don't want to lose some of our hard edges. For example, the eyebrows, we really want that hard change between dark and light because it shows you a shape. And if you lose that, everything just becomes rounded and blurry and smooth. As you can see, when I've done that to his lips, it looks like he's been stung by a bee. And you know me, I like stings by bees based on my recent videos. With the Batman drawing, I really wanted to have the painted strokes and I prefer my original version to this newer version. But there is some techniques that I did look at and go, mm, that may have been better result. So let's look at comparing the three practice results. For me, Krita won the battle in this example. Um, it was just so quick to get the results I wanted to get. 
Trent is an amazing program, it's free, it can be quite complex, but it can also be very easy if you just stick to the main things that are available to you. I'm still getting my head into all those little options and hopefully I can provide you with some of those videos in the future. So as mentioned earlier, my Batman speed paint is up in the corner. Thanks so much for watching and Rebob is out.